everybody, welcome to Let's Look at Kingdoms and Castles. This is a new, uh, sandbox city builder game. Town builder? It's banished, okay? <laughs> it's voxel banished is the easiest way to describe it. I'm not accusing them of ripping it off, but in terms of conceptualizing what it is, that's the easiest way to understand what's going on. And, uh, this game made a little bit of a splash this week. It came out earlier, uh, and it is $10. Obviously, it's not coming out later. That would be ridiculous. How am I even playing it unless I had some kind of space-time continuum alteration device, or as you Earthlings refer to it in the present timeline of Time Machine. Uh, played about an hour of this so far, and generally, my thoughts on it are positive. It's a very pleasant game. It's banished without usually it seems like all of your peasants dying of starvation like they did in banished despite hoarding you know 30 pieces of salt pork in their basement and refusing to love thy neighbor instead it's just a nice kind of relaxing meditative city building experience there are defenses it has like the lightest of light rim world vibes as i click uh, new here you can see that we can have uh, a hard difficulty that basically has raiders and dragons which are you know this game's version of rim world raids combined with um I guess having an alien ship show up or something like that. Um, but we'll play on uh, on easy mode here. Long, lovely summers, short and mild winters, less raiders and dragons. And then we can choose where to place ourselves on the map. Um, and to be honest with you, I kind of like being near the shore with some fertile ground around me, which is the dark green in case that's not... Uh, abundantly clear. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not gonna put myself here. Why don't we put our castle like right there? Oh, I, sorry, we can do it like this instead. Is there any way to actually change where we want our castle to be, or am I losing my mind? You know? Oh, dude, this changes the actual map. I see. I see. I see. Okay. Because previously I was like, I thought it was just putting us down in a different place on the existing map. No, I don't like this map. I want more fertile ground. You know what? I like this area right over here. If we could build our castle here, that'd be perfect. So let's accept. Name your kingdom. Marintil, sure, why not? Okay. So the way that this game works is actually very simple. Uh, this is actually a pretty good start. The downside is uh, trees are kind of far away, so we'll probably build our castle like right here because we need that lumber in order to... Uh, build things in order to expand our town. Our goal is to make a town. All of our resources are down here down here at the bottom. Stone, uh, sorry, wood, stone, food, gold, charcoal, which is used for heating, iron, blacksmiths create tools, which I have never seen so far, and armaments, which are also made by blacksmiths. So there's a few different competing aspects that we've got in the game. We want to expand our town. That re re Expanding our population requires building houses. Houses require wood. Um, we want to make sure that we have enough food for our townspeople to live, and we want to make sure they're happy so more townspeople are attracted to live here, and they also, you know, don't find themselves unpleasant. Also, happy peasants will pay more taxes, but we'll get into that as we play here. We're going to play a lot on speed three, probably. So we're going to put down our keep. The keep is the, um, the first building that you place in the games, and it's free. So we start with five units, and we'll usually get some advisors right after we build it that'll tell us what we should be doing, but we should basically be building roads uh, and farms to start with. We need farms to feed our workers. We need roads, then houses. Good day, sire. By the way, these guys say the same thing over and over. This is an early access, and one of the complaints that I've heard uh, that already within about an hour seems to not fall on deaf ears is a lack of a late game and um, a certain lack of variety as well uh, as you progress further and further into the game and I, I think that I can definitely see where that's coming from even after playing for like an hour I was like I think I've got the general loop here and it doesn't seem to have too much to offer beyond that but I don't think that renders it uh, you know an unpleasant experience or anything like that so we start with 12 uh, wood let's build a house Oh, we have to build a road first. Okay, so let's build a road, and we'll just put it, like, here to start with. And then we'll put a house next to the road to get started here, because this can hold more people. And then we should put a farm down as well, and we should probably put the farm down in, like, a different area of the map. But I'm not planning this too uh, rigorously, which might be part of my problem, to be honest with you. So... Uh, let's just put the road down here, and then we'll go food, and we'll put down a farm. Everything's got a really cute voxel look to it, and essentially you don't have to micromanage your workers. Your workers will just figure that out for themselves. So, five peasants is actually the perfect number for us, uh, and you can see that they're very happy as well. Five peasants is the right number because uh, every house or every havel, 
Hovel, I guess. I'm sorry, Dark Souls there. Uh, can hold five peasants. So the next things that we want to do uh, are expand, basically. So we want more houses and more farms. But you can see as we go to our castle here, there's other things we can build. Ignore the remaining castle stuff for now. We'll go to our town instead. We can build more roads. We can build wells, which provide water. Not for survival, um, but rather for fire prevention. And because we'll be raided eventually by dragons, this is important to keep in mind. Cottages and manors are just better houses. Churches and libraries give happiness and knowledge. I think they might just give happiness. Or provides happiness per knowledge and gains knowledge over time. Okay, so there is a deeper system there than I originally thought. Town Square attracts more people and increases happiness. Tavern increases happiness but consumes food. Hospital treats plague, which I've never seen. The pier allows building on water. And this is just like a prestige statue, I guess, you could build at the end. Then for food. Farms and orchards have different parameters but are essentially similar. Granaries hold your food for the winter. Otherwise, your food is lost if it's not harvested. Windmills increase your farm's efficiencies, and bakers turn it into bread, which is better for storage, I think. Maybe happiness as well, but I'm not sure. And the uh, market allows you to sell excess resources for food, I believe, the kind of banish style, get some gains from trade. Finally, and we're able to go through every single one of these because, again, the game is pretty simplistic, at least in its current state. Um, we also have the ability to mine, so we can build quarries near light-colored stone, like here, for example. And then we can use that to build stone structures, like basically castle turrets that we can use to, to up our defenses. Foresters uh, are actually really important. They allow us to have like a... It's like a farm that produces wood, basically. Stockpiles hold uh, supplies. Charcoal is used to make charcoal, which you use for heating. And uh, iron mines are used to get iron, which I've never used so far. But um, you can get tools and armaments from blacksmiths. And masons repair stone structures. Rock removal I didn't even know existed. But it's nice because uh, some of these rocks you can't remove with anything but rock removal. They're otherwise unusable. So this allows you to clear space you might want. But anyway, for now, um, all we're going to do is issue some chop orders. And we're going to try to get to the point, uh, as we go to speed three here, where we can uh, build maybe our own forester. And we want the forester to basically passively produce wood for us. So it's, everything's got a nice voxel look to it. It's not just like Minecraft. It actually looks a lot like a uh, Block hood, I thought, or, or even cube world, even though those are two fairly like disparate examples. By the way, some of these buildings, like farms, for example, cost people, uh, or they cost us people, is probably a better way to put it. Um, if someone's working on a farm, they can't do construction. So we always want to make sure that our, our population is increasing as well. So uh, I'm just going to go to industry. We need, oh, we need five stone in order to build a, um, a forester. So we want, I think we want a forester pretty quickly. So we could build a quarry, but we're too far away from our roads right now. So let's build uh, a little road set up here. The day night cycle is actually like a yearly cycle. And it moves very, very quickly as you'll, uh, as you'll see here. Um, so we'll wait till these roads come in and then we should be able to build a quarry. Oh, we don't have the resources right now. But anyway, g give it a little bit of time here. We're going to continue chopping these. Usually you get uh, three wood or sorry two wood per tree and there can be three or four trees per tile i think so um you can do the math there but you want the foresters quickly because otherwise the trees you chop down are kind of gone forever whereas if we uh if we get the forester down it becomes somewhat sustainable so we also again need to build houses pretty quick because uh, otherwise we're not gonna have the population to to work everything so we'll put a quarry down i don't know why we can't put it here it's like one tile too far away, I guess. But we'll put our quarry down here, so that'll start... It'll take a worker and start getting stone from here. And uh, hopefully we did not, but... In a little wood and a little stone, we'll be able to build a stockpile. And then that means that, you know, you, you've seen RimWorld played, probably many of you at least. You don't want to carry all of your stone all the way back to the castle every time. You want to just rather... The miner goes in, he grabs some stone, he throws it on a stockpile outside, he goes back in. It really increases your efficiency. I don't want to, I don't want to watch, so Wazda, Wazda, what did I do here? Get, get out of here. <laughs> hey, T? Was it T for Twitch? I don't know what I did. I, I accidentally activated the Twitch integration inside of the game. All right. So it's very, very, like, this is not some, Banished, City Skylines, SimCity 5, these took me, like, at least a couple of hours to wrap my head around. RimWorld, of course, is slightly different, but um, you get the idea. Like, 
those took me forever to wrap my head around. I'm just going to build uh, another house in the hopes of... Uh, you know what? Let's, let's save room to expand our castle. I'm just going to build another house, like, over here instead. Um, those took me a long time. No one's available to build it. Okay, you know what? Turn off the turn off the quarry for now. Just, just until we get more people. So we're going to disable this building so we can get uh, people available to work on our construction. Because we have no idle workers right now, which is, is a bad sign. But this should attract more people. We should have enough food, and, and life's going to be fine, I think, here. So wait till we get more people living in this house. Now we have ten beds, five population, two idle, because they're not doing anything else. Uh, so I, I think for now I can have you go back here. But this might be a little bit on the... <laughs> trying a little bit too hard to be efficient. But now we got more people now anyway. Okay, sweet. Um, yeah, it's really, really easy to wrap your head around, and so far that seems like it's both the, uh, the blessing and the curse of Kingdoms and Castles. A lot of people use accessibility as if it was a four-letter word, as if it was a bad thing, but I really appreciate that it's strategy, but it's light strategy, because I don't always want to... I, I think people have a fallacy, I guess is what I'm trying to say, that the most complex game, from a strategy standpoint, is always going to be the best. I love EU4, I love CK2, even though I'm basically garbage at them. Um, sometimes I'm not really looking for that. I'm looking for something where I can zone out a little bit and uh, have light strategy elements that feel like I'm working my brain and it's satisfying to work through light problems like that. Um, but it's got a little bit more of a casual uh, angle to it that's that's not quite as... Uh, I don't want to say punishing, but you know what I mean? Not quite as rigorous might be a, a better word to use. So this is like the winter season, and we started year four. My lord, two people visited, but only one found a satisfactory home and decided to serve you. Only got one resident. Well, we got a lot of stuff to do, basically. We, we know what we have to do this year. So we're going to build a... Um, we're going to build a small stockpile. We're probably going to try to get a granary. We might want more farms, but we have 24 out of 50 food right now, which is not bad. The homes do store some food, so that's uh, important. Come on. Where's my... Uh, I mean, we, we can chop some more stuff here to try to make sure that we uh, can get enough wood to build our small stockpile as well. But we actually are kind of micromanaging right now. I don't resent it, but I want my, uh, my population to grow a little faster. That's also why we won't be seeing a series on this, at least for the time being, by the way. Because as cute and as fun as it is in, in short bursts... Um, there's not quite enough depth, I think, to sustain even, like, a week-long series. And that's not to say that I don't think it's worth ten bucks, which at, at this point is actually kind of a, uh, a cheaper price point, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, and I think ten bucks is the right price point for something like this that holds a lot of promise and a lot of potential, but maybe isn't quite there yet, uh, for, like, a hundred hours of gameplay. Especially when people, when they play City Builders, I think they can really get lost in them, uh, and play them forever. Only one found a satisfactory home? Come on. What's wrong with the hovel? I thought it was nice. Not to mention we got enough food. Trust me, we get the stockpile going, everything's going to be fine. Okay, so now that we've got the stockpile, we want to get a forester up. And that will require us to turn on our mine again. You don't have to do this, by the way. The first time that I did this, uh, the first time that I played this, I did not micromanage my buildings in the least. Do you, are you guys working the stockpile? I mean, that's, again, we don't need you to be working that just yet. You can do anything else and, and we'll be fine. Um, we want to build a forester and then we should start to have a town that's working pretty well for us here. So, forester costs 15 and 5. So, if you could do me a favor and just chop, like, a little bit more wood because we're going to need the roads as well. And I'll be feeling pretty good. So, you can see what everybody's up to here. Like, um, you know, somebody was just guarding our keep for some reason. Uh, some people are moving resources back and forth. Like, he's taking stone into the castle, which I guess is kind of a... It's a storage uh, stockpile zone of its own. I might be playing this somewhat inefficiently, by the way, which I think is a, a fair criticism. Your town has not really grown too large, considering it's been, uh, it's been going for five years, but... I, I think it's going okay. Now we can build a forester. And we need to build more roads first. I like building in kind of a, a radial style here, because uh, I believe no one's available to work on the construction. That's fine. Close this for a second. Um, I like building in a, a radial structure here, because when we want to build defenses, I think it's going to be better to have them close to our base, so we have to use a lot less stone when we're making parapets and something and stuff like that. So we're going actually a little slowly here. What do you say? New construction, but no one to build it. And what are you? You're mad about a lack of food or something like that? 
Sometimes the UI scale's a little weird. Food stores are running low. Don't worry, once we get the Forester up, we'll get granaries and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Everybody in this town's gonna be so happy. I know they're at 68 happiness right now. We're gonna get them to that magic number, that's right. Okay, put a Forester down. Somebody's gonna work there. <laughs> are you guys working this mine still? Four out of four workers. I gotta be honest, we got half of our population working in that mine. Peasants are mostly fine, but can do better, yeah. Again, I, I honestly should not even be looking at the advisors at this point because there's just, um, there's no need, really. The advisors pretty much give you uh, the same information. Like, the dude in the middle told me to raise taxes for like 45 minutes when I played in my first town. And the lady's always like, we don't have food, we don't have food. There needs to be, um, certainly like as as time progresses. So we got two workers in here. This this will now passively generate wood for us, which is awesome. But um, certainly, uh, we, uh, we would benefit from having more rigorous analysis from the advisors, but that can come in time, I suppose. So, uh, we also probably should put a stockpile over here, just for the record, and uh, that'll save us a lot of efficiency, so let's get that done first. And then we're gonna get a granary, and as far as I'm concerned, once we get this dang granary, things can start to pop. So we're gonna we're gonna also build our town slightly larger. Put another one of these down here. People are relatively happy. So happiness is at 72, 73 now. Hopefully we can get to 15 people. That's five more workers. Food stores are running low. Oh, you got seven wheat plants. Like, what are you getting on my case for here? As long as you can get it stored inside of the castle, I don't care. I actually don't know how much the castle can store uh, by itself. So we got wood, we got stone. We got 12 people working here. I'm gonna open up the mine again. Oh, we did have two people work in that stockpile as well, which is ill-advised. Three people visited, but only two found a satisfactory home. Peasants need more food for the winter. I'm just gonna stop checking on the advisors, but there's something hardwired in the mind of like everybody who plays video games. If you see a glowing exclamation point, you click on that dang glowing exclamation point to get it off of the screen. All right, um, we probably have enough to build a granary now. Oh man, it's actually much larger than I remembered. Uh, to be honest with you, before we build a granary, we should probably build a, a farm. So we have more food. And uh, I think we can build it there and we'll be just fine. No one's available to work on the construction. Okay. I kind of, I, I think I botched this by having, um, by having too few peasants too early. But, and, and too, I tried to get a little min-maxy with it. But again, this game, that's one of the strengths of it is that it's, it's fairly tolerant uh, for mistakes. You gonna build that? We can, we can close this stockpile temporarily. It's fairly tolerant when it comes to mistakes, which means, uh, it, it reminds me a lot of actually like uh, Rimmed Capsule, which is a, a strategy game. It's a real-time strategy game, but it doesn't really follow the tradition of other real-time strategy games of being fairly punishing. Instead, it's, it's relatively casual and easily replayable. Uh, and another game like this is kind of Kingdom. I'm not saying Kingdom is an easy game necessarily, um, but it, it's a minimalistic strategy game. And this kind of feels like a minimalistic city builder. No one will want to live in our kingdom. Make sure people have enough food to eat. Make sure people have enough food to eat. Babies, dude. Okay. Granary, get ready. Build it there. That's fine. I got high hopes here. The thing is, because of my inefficient building, I also need more population as soon as possible. Probably, again, having people work the stockpiles is just a little silly, but um, you guys don't have quite enough food. We probably need more farms as well. It's advisable to probably have more farms than this. There's, a, It's one of those games where um, it feels easy to play it inefficiently because there's probably like a golden ratio of uh, of food, or I should say farms to town townspeople. Towns to, or sorry, farms to population is what I mean. Everybody's hungry, and nobody's particularly happy right now. Oh, that person got happy. Did they just eat some bread? Hmm. Peasants are starving. I ain't ever scared of that. Nah, this is all gonna be worth it in the end, I promise. I know you got 48 happiness right now, and that doesn't seem good, but, uh... I'm telling you, in time here, we gotta grow our population to get more... 
workers to work more farms. Which is going to lead to requiring more food. Let's build a, a cottage here. So a cottage is our second level housing unit. It requires stone and it holds a lot of people. But people who live in the, the cottage are happier because it's, uh, because it's a higher quality building. So again, we, you know, to be honest with you, close the stone mine again. We don't, oops, we don't need four people working this stone mine. Put the food in the granary, or put it in your own homes, and we'll be good to go here. Once we get a higher population, one peasant has left the kingdom in despair. This is a terrible sign. But you know what? All the peasants no longer have bread icons over their houses, which I think is a huge positive for us. And this is what I would consider to be like getting out of the first phase of the game, really. We're at a, I wouldn't say, um, equilibrium. That would probably be a little rich, but... I like that if you get on the wrong foot, uh, building your colony right off the bat, it's not like an immediate catastrophe. Like, um, maybe it'll bite us in the butt in the future, but for now, um, it's, it's not actually that catastrophic that we kind of made mistakes with our, uh, with our building. And I like that, again. Uh, I don't know if it's, at the present moment, the most robust city builder out there, but it is, uh, at least very fun and easy to play. And that's worth something, to me. Maybe not as much, but it's worth something. So th this, by the way, shows us our food down here, so we can see, uh, whether we actually are gonna be able to maintain a surplus this year. Our happiness is going up, which is a good sign. We got 27 beds, but only 15 population, which is a pretty bad sign. Um, but hopefully as happiness improves, that'll... That'll get better. So what's the next tier of stuff for us? Well, more cottages would be nice. Um, something to improve uh, our happiness as a, you know, townspeople here. As townspeople. As, as our mayor might be happy for us or might be good for us. So building a town square or a tavern, it'll cost us food, but it'll give us a little happiness and, and help us recruit more people to join the town. So let's go with the little town square over here. And then we uh, will hopefully attract enough people to fill out these beds. And, uh, oh, four people found a satisfactory home and decided to stay with you. That's essentially one full mine of production work in here. Work it double time it. No, I'm not going to go there. Um, but this attracting more people to join us, uh, again, more workers, requires more food, but gives us a lot more ca capacity for, uh, output as well so hopefully our happiness continues to rise it's pretty fluid so far we're at 75 and it seems to me uh a that we've lived our life like a candle in the wind but also oh did you see that the peasants think you're an excellent ruler now because i've played democracy 3 we can start to tax them if we want so we could uh, build a treasure room if we get i think 50 50 and just 50 50 we can start to actually tax every peasant an annual uh an annual uh, amount that we can then use because some buildings require gold. For example, the market requires 10 gold. The um, rock removal requires 30 gold. I think there's there's more in our castle here, like archers. Archers require 20 gold, which is kind of a lot. But we need those archers for our own defense. So we got kind of a bustling little town here, and hopefully at least, I'm gonna play for a little bit longer, by the way, but hopefully for now, this has been kind of a, a little bit of a good introduction into how the, the base building slash city building stuff works in uh, Kingdoms and Castles. It's extremely easy to wrap your head around. Which, again, for some people is going to be a negative, and for some people I think is going to be uh, a positive. Cancel that chop order, buddy. Um, right now we got a decent amount of stone coming in. We could build an iron mine over here, but I'll just be honest with you, we're not going to. Because we're not going to get to that point uh, over the course of this video. Um, the next step... How much do these cost? They cost 15 stone each. It's a little rich for my blood. What about a treasure room? That can be the next thing. It costs 10 wood and 50 stone. Now the stone, we only generate 12 stone per year. So there's always that innate human greed, right? <laughs> like I want to... Uh... Oh, your once quiet village, or your once quiet hamlet has now become a small village. Maybe over 25 people does that so it's all about homeostasis you know we get more population than production well let's try to keep that unemployment down um you know we can spend wood and generate a farm and then you know this is 
two more jobs and also maybe allows the granary to function better. Plus, we could turn on uh, our... Oh, our stockpile's already on over there. So, yeah, we got, like, a, a pretty good setup for our... Uh, for our system so far. I'm just going to continue to kind of build a... Uh, a little village structure here, if you don't mind. So we'll uh, build out like this. There are some, it's very light, but there are some buildings that uh, give your peasants like a mood debuff. Like if you, we need charcoal actually, now that I think about it. So um, the charcoal maker will put it like relatively far away because people don't like their houses being next to uh, the thing that generates smoke, so we'll put our charcoal maker here. Um, but people need charcoal. It's the central hypocrisy of human life, right? I hate this thing. I don't want to live near it, but I need the essential service it provides. So um, the charcoal allows them to have heat in the winter, which is probably why our... Oh, I was going to say that's why our happiness dipped, but actually food shortages are, are the reason our happiness dipped. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't build uh, a farm here, it's because the land is not fertile. It's barren. So... I believe food production is influenced by that, but even more so, just on some of these, um, they won't let you place a farm because it's barren. So, um, what's going on here? How do you feel? Let me guess, the food shortage. The peasants are starving without food. They could soon die. Well, you guys are going to figure it out. I got high apple pie in the sky hopes. And this is probably where a little bit of like diversity might be good for us. Like if we uh, put down an orchard instead of just... Six farms or seven farms, you might be in a better place. But it seems like we're, we're doing relatively fine here. We've got uh, 39 beds and 27 population. So I'm assuming people visit our kingdom, but none saw fit to stay. I, I think the way that it works, and you might correct me if I'm wrong here, because I know there's people that have played a lot of this game already. Um, I think the way it works is things happen on an annual cycle. So it's not like people are constantly walking by and choosing whether or not to join the, the hamlet. I think it's... Uh, once a year, like, they roll the dice and they go, okay, 12 people just walked by, um, or twice a year, maybe. Um, and then based on your happiness, that influences the number of them that are likely to stay with you. Okay, so that guy's now telling us to raise taxes. So let me go to speed one here for a second. Um, we can now build a treasure room. So the other, I mean, the game's called Kingdoms and Castles, right? We've been doing a decent job of building, uh onto our uh, kingdom, but we haven't adjusted anything to do with our castle yet. There's constructions that can actually allow you to build almost like a fort, or fortifications at least, uh, around your uh, around your base. So the, the treasure room is actually something that unlocks the ability to get taxes. We just need to have one more population available to actually construct it. So we'll wait, and I mean, these cottages are... This one's full, actually, but uh, this cottage... It's not even close. There's still five more people that can come here. Hopefully, oh, we just had people move in. Our kingdom attracted six new residents. And what a coincidence, our happiness was at 81 there. So now we've got people available to, to build this. And uh, now that it's built, let's up the tax rate. We'll just put this on a... Uh, we'll put this on a, a one gold tax rate for right now. We want our happiness to be good. Uh, when we don't want to... Uh, we don't want to drive our happiness down just by... Uh, being silly and, and charging them too much tax. Especially because we don't have the resources to build that much right now anyway. So the next step for what we might want to do is... Uh, and, and there's various different ways you can go here, you know? We could build a windmill and then surround it with farms. Or I suppose we could just build a windmill and plop it down like right here. Uh, and it'll make these three farms stronger at least. Which is probably, I assume, an astute idea. Um, we could make sure that our happiness stays high, and the way that we would probably do that is by building uh, a library. So why don't we build a library right uh, next year, and we'll put it as close to the houses as possible. Raise happiness. We got, like, maximum population right now. So actually, in the meantime, we got a lot of food stored up as well. So you can see how, like, expansion comes faster and faster as time goes on here. And it's, a again, a very meditative experience. For a, a cheap game in early access, it's not just fun to play, but it's very pleasant. I have very little negative to say about the game, but don't take that uh, as gushing necessarily. Uh, because I don't think, again, this is something you could spend 40 hours in right now. But if you're looking for something to play over the course of a weekend, or even like a night for 5 or 6 hours, I think Kingdoms and Castles... You could do a lot worse. It's a pleasant experience. It almost reminds me of like a video game rental. The the speed at which you kind of get done with it. Um, 
There's better stuff in the genre if you haven't played it yet, but this also has the promise of being in early access, which doesn't necessarily mean you should get it right now, but, you know, keep an eye on it for the future, perhaps. So, um, the next step, we don't quite have 30 gold yet, but the next step is going to be to build a library. And we can also up production in many different areas here. Like, we could build a forester over here uh, and, and get way more wood. We could build an iron mine. We could go all the way over here, although I would prefer not to, and build a uh, another quarry. Now, the one thing that you have not seen... Food stores running low, peasants are mostly fine. Um, the one thing you're not seeing at all is the defensive aspect of the game, unfortunately. So those, I've only seen two of them in the entire time that I've played the game so far. This is me placing a library. I don't think you need to worry about access, by the way. They'll just, they'll filter in as they see fit. Um, but, uh, there are Viking raids and there are dragon attacks. The Vikings just sort of, like, come over on their longships and burn things up. Uh, but the, uh, the dragons light things on fire as well, which is why you want a well in case things spontaneously combust or something like that. So, actually, before we get too busy here, let's plop a well down right next to our farm. So, if they light on fire, there's easy access. They can also get access uh, from the ocean or from the, the water surrounding us. I'll bet the peasants would enjoy a tavern. Well, stop being so, like, picky, dude. We're working on it, okay? We built a library. Peasants should be, like, mad happy. I get that you're not fully staffed, but that's because we've got to wait for the, the festival to attract people to our town again. Everything's going relatively well. we got productive farms. Two, two found it satisfactory. I'm a little insulted, if I'm being honest, but, you know, that's that's life. Put down another couple farms, you know, introduce some jobs. I'm a job creator. And then the next step, and we'll just do this at, to an extreme that is absurd. What you could do is build, like, once you get enough stone, use these to surround your entire area, or at least the important stuff, with stone walls. And it's got kind of like a, a modular structure where you can just keep building up, 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 up. If you want, uh, and we're gonna we're gonna show that off right here. Although we can only build one of these at a time. <laughs> can we build it on top of that? We cannot. Um, and then, oh, we can build two of them right now. The uh, the higher you build your stone towers, and you can gate them off. By the way, that that will prevent enemies from entering without sieging it. At least I'm assuming um, by just building these higher and higher, um, you actually not only change the look of your castle in a way that's satisfying, but you create a uh, a uh, higher viewing angle, and then when you have archers, your archers will uh, will get better range from being higher up. So there actually is a benefit to building like a, a tall castle, and I think you expand outwards in a way that's both logical and functional, and and that's kind of unique. Instead of, I mean, like a lot of strategy games, what they do is like you've entered the next phase, and then all of your buildings just change. This has kind of a, a little bit more of a uh, I'm gonna raise taxes, by the way. A little bit more of a more holistic approach, I guess, is what I'm saying. So. Let me guess. Food stores run low. No kidding. Who would have thought? Well, that's what the farms are for. We do have a population of 50. We have eight unemployed right now? How? So throw some farms on it, dude. Don't let me stop you. We always need more food. We got, we're got we a very agricultural society here, okay? As long as you guys have got food to make it through the winter, we can build an archery tower. And then hopefully if we play for like another 10 minutes, you'll see our archer shoot at a dragon or something like that. So let's continue approaching uh, absurdity here. Not enough support to build this high. you got to build surrounding blocks first. Okay. I didn't realize that actually. So we'll put an um, archer's tower up here. And then we should, you can see the range of it right there. So if anybody gets close to any of our buildings except essentially the charcoal maker or some of our farms, we will now have archers that are able to shoot at enemies, which is, is a cool approach now that that is built. Uh, so how would we extend outwards from here? I mean, maybe now we'd want to build like a manor instead of building uh, more cottages. And we can actually get to that pretty quickly. I mean, it would, might take us like another year of tax income. 2 times 50. It's 100 gold per year, I think, right now. Can't see because the UI is a little jacked up sometimes. But it's early access, you know. It's, it's understandable. Oh, no, we're getting... 
Right, we have to pay librarians and we have to pay soldiers as well. So we're gaining 13 tax per year. But the years go by real quick. So this is just my way of improving our the size of our population without actually uh, possibly decreasing our happiness. So I'm just going to raise tax quickly. Got a pair of soldiers. Come on, give me a dragon or something. We've been playing every in-game day. Or sorry, every in-game year is like two minutes long. And then we're on speed three, so it's even shorter than that. I'm due for a dragon attack. Hit me up. I'm begging you. So we'll build a manor. And you don't want the manor close to the charcoal or people will be like wicked cheesed off. So instead, we'll just say, hey, house on a hill. You get a, you get a wonderful uh, manor over here. Why are the peasants so unhappy? Happiness 49? But for what? You got charcoal. You got food. Oh, you don't you don't like being taxed that much? That's you know what? Now that I've built the manor, I've used it to get infrastructure, and now we're gonna we're gonna lower this tax rate if they'll let us. Excuse me, I'd like sometimes clicking on things a little weird. Oh, you can only go up to three. There you go. So we we had the highest taxes available. Lower taxes, look at that. Happiness going through the roof. You hear that, politicians? <laughs> it's not really that simple, I suppose. Um, but yeah, you know, I think it's it's somewhat clear. We're coming to the end of Kingdoms and Castles. The main strength of this game is it's extremely accessible, very, very easy to play. Um, I, I don't think it's a fit for a series for me right now, just because I'd be spinning my wheels in commentary all the time, doing exactly the same thing over and over. But I really like the modular building. Uh, I like... Again, it's a casualized city builder slash strategy game, and I think that's really cool. And the genre sometimes raises itself to provide the most hardcore slash realistic experience ever. So I like that. Uh, I like that in this case, we have a, a game that's a little bit more focused on being the strategy game that everyone can play right now. That being said, know thyself, to thine own self be true. Uh, if you think you're the kind of person that wouldn't be interested in this because it seems a little shallow to you, I think you already know the answer to the question that I was going to pose to you. It's probably not exactly uh, like your number one style of game, right? Or your, your number one choice, I should say. Factorio, RimWorld, Europa Universalis 4, Crusader Kings 2, things that provide you with a little bit more fine-grained control and, and more comprehensive and, and robust functionality are probably more for you. But honestly... I've had a very pleasant time playing this so far, and uh, I think that you might as well, as long as you go in with tempered expectations. So this is Kingdoms and Castles. Sadly, we saw no dragon attacks, but uh, they do exist. A little shallow, but also very accessible. It's like a hot tub. It's pleasant, but don't put your head underwater, because you're going to hit the jets. I don't know what that means. Either way. Thanks for watching. If you want to pick up the game on Steam, it's 10 bucks. It's a little cheaper than your average indie game at this point. Uh, and offering, I think, more than average of a pleasant experience for sure. Uh, you can pick it up on Steam as linked in the video description below. And of course, if you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And I'll see you next time.